Hello everyone. In the prior session, we covered internal control over cash receipts, which is incoming cash. In this session, we would look at internal control over cash disbursement, paying out cash. Internal control over cash disbursement is implemented to manage and save the company's cash outflows. So the primary purpose of these controls is to make sure that cash payment, cash leaving the company, is properly authorized, accurately recorded, and only paid for legitimate business purposes. Now, why is this important? Well, this helps prevent unauthorized payments. Of course, we don't want to make payments to people or companies we don't want to pay. Errors and fraud. The importance of internal control over cash disbursements lies in its role in maintaining financial accuracy. We want the good numbers and integrity, integrity of the financial statements, because we pay a lot. We pay our employees, we pay our suppliers, we pay taxes, we pay rent, we pay insurance. We want to make sure those payments are accurate. So by implementing strict controls, businesses can minimize the risk of mismanagement, such as overpayments, duplicate payment, and most importantly, unapproved expenditures. These controls also ensure that financial records reflect accurate and complete information, as I just mentioned, which is crucial for decision-making, auditing purposes, and regulatory compliance in some cases, depending which business you are in. For example, if you're in the, in the banking or insurance, that's critical. At the end of this session, we would look at a multiple choice question. But in this session specifically, we would look at techniques and tools for internal control for cash disbursements. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true-false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by discussing a golden rule for internal control over cash payments. We always make cash payments disbursement using checks. Now, when we say checks, it doesn't have to be a physical check where we write the check. Electronic payments serve the same purpose of a check. Why? Check, there's a record on when we made the payment, who made the payment, when did we make the payment, for what purpose, how much, so on and so forth. So the check keeps a trail. And again, when I say a check, and the check, the physical checks are becoming less and less relevant as more and more people are paying online through their credit card or if they're paying through their bank account, it's electronically, electronic fund transfer. But the concept is the same for both. You need a record of the amount, when, how much, for what purpose, so on and so forth. The other thing we have to make sure of is only authorized individuals, such as the owner, should have access to the accounting records and check signing authority. So you should not leave the checks hanging everywhere in the business because if someone can, can get their hands on them, they might write a check, forge the signature, and the bank's not going to examine every check for signature. Or if you are doing online payments, you want to make sure it's protected through a password multi-factor authentication as well. Now, when we're dealing with a small business, that's not a big deal. Why? Because in a small business, usually the owner personally supervise and reviews every payment. That's not a problem because that's the job of the owner. If you're the owner of the business, owner slash manager, you're going to be looking at your payments and that's what's going to keep you awake at night. Payments, who am I paying, how much, so on and so forth. Now, for larger businesses or large companies, and this is what we assume we are dealing with in this situation, we implement internal controls like a voucher system. Now, we need to talk later about petty cash. If the payment is small, 
and unfrequent, we might use a petty cash system. We'll talk about that in a separate recording. In the absence of a petty cash, which is the exception, all payments should be made by a check and there should be a system before you sign a check. There should be a system of checks and balances that we are making the disbursement for the appropriate expenditure. Now, how do we do that? We use a system called a voucher system of control. Now, we need to go over the system. Now, what's a voucher? Well, I'm going to tell you what it is now, and in a few minutes, you're going to see exactly what it entails. But the voucher is basically a folder, literally in the real world. It's a folder, or it doesn't, you, you, companies sometimes, they don't, you know, folders are expensive. They staple all the paperwork. It's a bunch of paperwork that verify, approve, and record the liability. Those paperwork are used to verify, approve, and record the liability for the cash payment. Therefore, making sure that we're issuing checks for payment that are verified, approved, and recorded liabilities. Simply put, a voucher system, we're going to be collecting paper through a system, a bunch of papers. Now, again, everything I talk about here is assuming a physical system, a physical accounting information system. Most of the time these days, everything is computerized. So everything that I mention, I hope, I hope to remember to remind you that this could be a computerized step. But if you understand the manual system, the computerize is easy. So I'm going to take you through a voucher system and remember this folder, this file. I'm going to show you this file again. Now, it doesn't make any sense. It will make sense at the end. So this is a voucher. This is the voucher. And you're going to see what I mean by the voucher. Let's get started looking at an example. So before I uh, start with this example, in the voucher system, there are certain documents you need to be familiar with. So I'm going to define the document. What is the, how is the document used and what's going to happen to that document? So starting, so we're going to work an example where we have someone in the marketing department asking to buy supplies. So what would they do? Some individual in the marketing department, let's call them Tom. They need supplies. I don't know. I just made up that name. Okay, they need supplies. What do they do? They start by filling out a form called a purchase requisition form. They need to get approval to buy the supplies. This document is used by an employee or a department to request the purchase of office supplies. This document would include what type of supplies, the quantities we need, the purpose of the purchase, and the requesting department. They will fill out the form. Now, this is usually initiated by someone in that department and the employee who would need office supplies. Now, obviously, this individual got the approval of someone or they have the authority to request those supplies. It doesn't matter if they need the approval. There's an internal mechanism within the marketing department where you get the approval. Now, you filled out this form. We need supplies. And specifically, I'm just going to keep it simple. We need to buy pens. Okay? Supplies, pens. That's what we need. A copy sent to the following department. They will send a copy of this supply, this request to the purchasing department. They will send a copy to the accounting department. I'm going to be highlighting the accounting department every time I mention the accounting department. So that's what they do. They will send one to the purchasing, and this is the per this is the department that's going to initiate the purchasing of pens. And they will send one to the accounting department. We'll see why later. Now this. This copies again went to the purchasing department. What will the purchasing department do? The purchasing department will prepare something called a purchase order. That's another document. Now, all these documents, every document I mention, what you should do if you want to see an actual from the real world, Google. Google purchasing the uh, purchasing order. Google purchase requisition. I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to explain what it is. But if you want to see a real one, Google it. So after the purchase requisition is approved, the purchasing department issues a purchase order to a supplier. Let's call them Office Depot. We'll send the request to Office Depot. The PO, the purchase order, includes specific details such as item description, quantities, agreed, agreed prices, and delivery terms. So we're going to buy 100 pens, 100 of those marketing pens. So this document is initiated by the purchasing department. It's a different department than the marketing department. And the purchasing department will send one copy back to the marketing department telling them, look, we placed the request for you. They will send, obviously, one copy to the supplier, which is an outside party, and we said it's going to be Office Depot for our purposes. And they will send one copy to the accounting department. We're not done yet. They will also send one copy to the receiving department because this department will receive the 100 pens. 
So the receiving department is separate from the purchasing, separate from everyone. So we will, we will not send the pen directly to the people that requested them, we send them to the receiving department, another part. What's gonna happen next? Once Office Depot receive this order, they will ship it and send us an invoice. Now we might receive the invoice before the shipment, the invoice might come separately, the invoice might come with the shipment, it does not matter, but we're gonna be receiving a supplier invoice. What is a, what is a supplier invoice? This is the invoice from Office Depot that is an external, external party, supplier. They send an invoice to the accounting department. Remember, the accounting department already have a purchase requisition. They already have a purchase order. Now they have an invoice. What would the invoice include? The invoice would say, we delivered 100 pens to your company. That's what they would say. And we want, we want to be paid for those. Okay? So the accounting department would receive that. What would they do with that? They will sit on it. Remember, they have a purchase requisition, a purchase order, and now they have an invoice. They keep all these documents together. Now again, these documents could be electronically. We're going to assume they are physically. Now the supplier, Office Depot, will ship the pens and will ship the pens to the receiving department. A department at the company, their job is to receive the product. The receiving department will prepare a receiving report, another document, and they would say we received pens and the quantity 100, they will inspect it. When the office supplies are delivered, the, the receiving department inspect the items, make sure they are good, they match what we need, and create a receiving report. And this document confirmed the receipts of the goods and notes any discrepancy, if there's any discrepancy between the order and the delivery. If we ordered 100, we received 100, there's no discrepancy. This receiving report is initiated by the receiving department, a separate department. Now, what would they do after they prepare this report? Obviously, they will keep one for themselves. They will send one to the marketing department telling them, guess what? Those pens that you ordered, we received. They will send one to the accounting department to close. To close what? At this point, the accounting department have a purchase requisition. They have a purchase order. We were invoiced. And now, we received a receiving report. It means we received the items. Once we have all these documents, we are ready to kind of have a liability. Now we have a legitimate liability. And they would also send this report to the purchasing department, telling the purchasing department what you ordered we received. Nothing, nothing for you to worry about. So they would close this purchase order. Close in quote because there's nothing to close and accounting close means it's going to be done. Now the accounting department will prepare all these paperwork and a voucher and this is all these paperwork so in this voucher there's the purchase requisition there's the purchase order there's the invoice and there's the receiving report all these documents are here again if the company wants to spend money they will have a folder if not they will stable them together if the system is computerized you don't see any document everything is being matched electronically so the accounting department compiles all the document related to the transaction i just told you purchase requisition purchase order receiving report and the supplier invoice and attaches them to a voucher the voucher serves as an internal document that collects all the necessary information to verify and approve the payment. So what we need, now we need the voucher before we verify and approve. This is prepared by the accounting department. So the accounting department send this voucher, send this voucher for approval and payment. So to tell them, look, we have everything that we need. They will send it for approval and payment. The voucher and attached document are reviewed by authorized individual, whoever that individual is, could be the finance manager, could be the controller for accuracy and compliance, and they will stamp it as approved. Once it's approved, good. Now we have a liability because everything is checked. It's approved by the finance manager. What's next? Once it's approved, we submit for payment. Again, that's another step. Payment step, the document, here are either check or electronic payment. They'll either send a check or we pay the supplier electronically. Authorization, after the voucher is approved, a check or electronic payment is issued to the supplier. The check is signed by authorized, by authorized individual, maybe more than once, more than one signature, maybe two signature, and sent to the supplier. Then we'll tell the accounting department, debit accounts payable, credit cash, because we made the payment. So notice what happened. We went this transaction from A to Z. We started by a purchase requisition. Somebody wanted supplies. They send this request to the purchasing department. 
the purchasing department sent the request to the supplier, the supplier shipped the product to the receiving department. All these documents that's taken place are being collected by the accounting department. Then they sent for review, they get approved, then we make the payment. And this is what the voucher system is all about. Once again, all of this could be done electronically. The, per the person in the marketing department will place the order electronically. It gets approved electronically. Now we have the documents in a computer system and a software. Then the purchasing department will send the request electronically to Office Depot. Office Depot will invoice you electronically. The receiving department will prepare an invoice and matches, matches it with the purchase order electronically. Everything is being done electronically, being matched electronically. It does not make a difference. The point is, this is a voucher system that does what? What's the key of the voucher system is to make payment for only approved purchases, approved purchases. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Which internal control ensures that all payments are properly verified and approved? Is it a cash budget? Is it a petty cash system? Is it a voucher system? Is it a bank reconciliation? Believe it or not, all the answer choices are good answer choices, but for a different purpose. What's a cash budget for? Cash budget, making sure you plan your cash ahead, your incoming cash and your outgoing cash, make sure you have enough cash to survive. Well, that doesn't ensure that the payments are being made are approved, verified and approved. So it's for a different purpose. Is it a petty cash system? Petty cash system is when you make payment with actual cash. And this is, we're talking about checks. So B is out. Is it a voucher system? And the answer is yes. A voucher system is a system that makes sure all the payments that are being made has been verified and approved through a series of steps supported by specific documentation. I would say C is correct. Is it a bank reconciliation? Bank reconciliation is an excellent internal control tool, but it does not serve the purpose of verifying and approving check paying system. We'll talk about the bank reconciliation later on. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you. Whether you are taking accounting courses, studying for your CPA, CMA, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.